cover the um, muscle physiology, how a muscle actually works and functions, and then we will get into the anatomy of the muscles, and that's where we will start dissecting the cat. In the tissue um, chapter, we learn that there are three different types of muscle tissue, and those are skeletal, cardiac, and smooth, and they differ in structure, location, function, and means of activation. Um, studying the most in this uh, section because we are going to be looking at the cat's um, skeletal muscles and comparing those to humans. Um, skeletal muscles are packaged. They're the tissue is packaged in a certain way to um, create more efficiency. So one of the things about skeletal muscles is they are um, striated. We learned that um, in chapter four. They are controlled voluntarily, and they're the only muscle that is controlled voluntarily. And they contract rapidly, but tire very easily. And that's going to be um, important when we're looking at the different coverings and it is responsible for our overall uh, body movement. Cardiac muscle occurs only in the heart. It is striated uh, just like skeletal muscle, but it is not voluntary, it is involuntary. And it, it's going to contract at a steady rate. We have a natural pacemaker in our heart that allows us to control that. And one of the things um, that the cardiac muscle has is something called myoglobin. And myoglobin is a protein that stores excess oxygen because your heart cannot go through um, anaerobic respiration and form lactic acid. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the cardiovascular system. And then smooth muscle tissue is found in the walls of hollow organs. And so it's going to force things um, through, usually in one direction, and it is the only one that is not striated, and it is also involuntary like your heart um, or cardiac muscle. And then peristalsis is the way that it contracts. We talked about this briefly um, last semester. It is just basically it's um, a wave-like contraction so that we can squeeze substances in one direction through a hollow organ. Now, characteristics of muscle tissue in general is um, something called excitability or irritability. And what this means is that it is able to receive a stimuli and respond to that stimuli. It can also contract, and that is the ability to shorten. And we're going to talk about exactly how a muscle uh, contracts and how it shortens its sarcomeres. And then extensibility, it can also be stretched or extended. Elasticity is the ability for it to recoil. Um, it's kind of a flexible material. And the muscle functions are to um, make things move. So cardiac muscle is responsible for pushing blood through the body. Smooth muscle maintains um, blood pressure and propels substances and then um, muscles maintain posture, stabilize joints, and generate heat. Now, like I said, in this chapter, we're going to mainly uh, focus on skeletal muscle. And so one of the things about skeletal muscle is there's all kinds of things going on. So each muscle is considered to be a discrete organ because it does have the muscle tissue, it has blood vessels, nerve fibers that are controlling it, and then connective tissue coverings. The three connective tissue coverings or sheaths are called an endomesium, and that is going to um, only uh, surround one muscle fiber, and a muscle fiber is a muscle cell. They call them fibers because they're elongated. Then we have something called a paramecium, which is going to surround a group of muscle cells or fibers called a fascicle. And I'm going to show you guys pictures of these, and we'll talk more in class. And then the epimecium, which is going to connect or going to surround the entire um, muscle itself, depending on where the muscle is in the body. So this diagram is showing you those three 
different sheaths. So here's a bone, and we know that a tendon um, attaches a bone to a, a muscle, so you can see that that's what's going on here. And then this is one entire muscle, this whole thing. And so the epimecium is covering the entire muscle. Then we've got these things called fascicles. Each one of these circles is a fascicle. And a fascicle is a bundle of muscle fibers. So each one of these red dots is one muscle cell or fiber. So you can see that they're packaged. And so what surrounds it is called a paramecium. And then within that fascicle, there's muscle fibers. And so this muscle fiber is extending out of that fascicle. And surrounding this muscle fiber, which is also a cell, is called the endomecium. And we're going to get into more on what those things do um, for the muscle a little bit later. Now we have seen the muscle, the skeletal muscle, um, underneath the microscope when we did our tissues. And one of the things that, you know, when we were doing the tissues, we were just identifying the different types. And we didn't really identify what we were looking at, which we'll look at it a little bit closer in this uh, chapter. Um, but one of the things about skeletal muscle is that it is, they're very long. And remember, a fiber is a cell. Um, and they have multiple nuclei. And then the cell membrane of a skeletal muscle fiber or cell is called a sarcolemma. Anytime you see sarco, it's going to mean muscle. And lemma is just going to be the, the covering. <clears throat> and it says the fibers, which is the cell, contain the usual organelles, myofibrils, sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is endoplasmic reticulum for a muscle, and something called T-tubules, which again, we'll uh, get into what all these things are a little bit later down the road. Now, myofibrils are what give the skeletal muscle its um, striations. And so what they are, are they, they are just proteins. And so we have two different proteins that are making up the muscle and they're, they're thin or thick and that's what gives it its striated appearance. And so these myofibrils, which is protein, and we know that when we're eating meat, we're eating mostly protein. So our muscles are mostly made up of protein. And these myofibrils um, are the contractile elements. They're the things that are actually contracting the muscle. And they make up most of the muscle vo volume. And this, this portion of it isn't going to make sense until we start to look at these um, things called sarcomeres. But the arrangement of the myofibrils within the fiber, which is the cell, um, allows this repeating series of A-bands and light I-bands. And that's, again, what is going to make the muscle look striped or striated. And so this is what, um, this is one muscle fiber. So this would be one cell. And then within the cell, uh, you can see that there are these things called myofibrils. And these myofibrils have these dark A-bands and lighter I-bands, and that's what causes that striation. And this would be the nucleus of the cell, and here is another nuclei because it's multinucleated. And then the covering, um, or the cell membrane around that muscle fiber is called the sarcolemma. And then throughout, you can see that there are mitochondria, and we need a lot of mitochondria in our bones, or in our, excuse me, in our muscles, because we need a lot of ATP to contract muscles, which again we'll get into a little bit later on in this chapter.